Hi guys, good day. I'm going to talk about the radial nerve, another important nerve of the upper limb. Radial nerve is the king of the arm, plus it's a savior of the forearm extensors, but hand hates him just because there is no muscle supply of radial nerve in the hand. So it starts in the axilla like with other nerves and it travels behind the arm and it enters the cubital fossa and lies in front of the lateral epicondyle so that's at the level of the elbow and then you can see that it divides into the superficial and the deep branch and the deep branch of the radial nerve it enters the posterior compartment of the forearm and coming to a bit more of detail of the radial nerve the radial nerve it originates in the posterior cord sorry it originates from the posterior cord of brachial plexus in the axilla and then you can see that this radial nerve has a bit of dodgy business there the, the radial nerve it stays behind the arm to have fun with triceps so in this cartoon you can see that radial nerve is in the posterior compartment having fun with the triceps so the radial nerve it winds around the arm and first it's seen between the long and medial head of the triceps then it's seen in the spiral group on the back of the humerus and then it goes between the lateral and medial head of the triceps so you can see that it's associated quite a lot with the triceps in the arm so in the cubital fossa, this dodgy radial nerve has decided at the end to make a special appearance in the in this golden triangle, this our cubital fossa. And when it, uh, you can see in this cartoon that the radial nerve is saying, "I'm fed up of staying behind. Let me come in front and shine." So radial nerve comes in front of the elbow, that is in the cubital fossa and it lies in front of the lateral epicondyle of humerus so now you can see radial nerve is going to get into bigger trouble so in the forearm this radial nerve has a tough time it gets split up so one bit that is the superficial part says get lost I'm splitting up and going to supply the skin of the hand and the deeper branch says unless he's not happy that uh, they are supplying s the skin of the hand so the deep branch of the radial nerve goes and supplies the muscles of forearm that they are the ext extensors of forearm so at the level of the lateral epicondyle the radial nerve splits into the superficial and the deep branch the deep branch it winds around the neck of the radius and goes through the supinator muscle and it supplies the muscles of the forearm that is the posterior compartment so next coming to another major nerve that is the ulna nerve so the ulna nerve arises from the medial cord of brachial plexus and it lies between the axillary artery and the vein so the the nerve root is C8 and T1 so in the arm, that's in the midway, sorry, in midway in the arm, the ulna nerve is seen piercing the medial intro, sorry, the medial intermuscular septum and descends behind it. And at the level of the elbow, it has got a very important relation. You can see it lies behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And in the forearm, it lies between the flexor carpi ulnaris and the flexor digitorum profundis muscle and when it comes to the wrist it passes anterior to the flexor retinaculum that is it lies over the flexor retinaculum in the when it gets to the hand it divides into the superficial branch and the deep branch the superficial branch supplies the palmaris brevis muscle the skin and the two fingers the deep branch supplies hypothenar muscles in trochee and the third and fourth lumbricus. 
So an important relation of the ulnar nerve at the elbow and the wrist, you can see here that the ulnar nerve is hiding under the bone in the elbow. That's it's under the medial epicondyle, but it's seen in front of the wrist. That is, it lies anterior to the flexor retinaculum at the level of the wrist. So coming to the next one, that's the carpal tunnel. So carpal tunnel is the, in simple terms, the tunnel at the level of the wrist which harbors the long flexor tendon of thumb and the fingers plus a very important nerve, that's the median nerve. So the, so the, if you break down and look at the muscles present in the carpal tunnel, you, you've got the long flexor tendons, the two lots, they are the flexor digitorum superficialis and the flexor digitorum profundus and there are other two muscles going through this tunnel as well the flexor carpi radialis muscle and the flexor pollicis longus muscle coming to the cubital fossa it's the golden triangle in the elbow and it lies in front of the elbow you can see here it's the uh, base of this triangle is the top bit so it's an imaginary line that joins the two epicondyles of the humerus and the four important structures you see in the cubital fossa are two nerves they are the median nerve and the radial nerve one dividing artery that's the brachial artery dividing into radial and ulnar artery and one tendon that's the biceps tendon so coming to uh, the details the lateral border of the cubital fossa is formed by the pronator teres muscle the medial border is formed by the brachioradialis muscle the base of the cubital fossa formed by two muscles one is the brachialis muscle and the other one is the supinator muscle so the structures as we mentioned earlier the two nerves one is the median nerve the other one is the radial nerve the third one is a biceps brachialis tendon the fourth one is the brachial artery that divides into radial and ulnar artery in the cubital fossa next coming to the axilla in the axilla you've got three important structures one is a, an artery a vein and a nerve plexus so the artery is the axillary artery the vein the axillary vein and the nerve plexus is the brachial plexus and coming to the relation of the walls and the relation uh, of the axilla it's got a medial wall a lateral wall a posterior wall and an anterior wall and it's got an inlet and outlet the anterior wall of the axilla is formed by the pectoralis major muscle, the subclavius and the pectoralis minor muscle. Medial wall is formed by the first, sorry, upper four ribs plus serrated anterior muscle. The posterior wall is formed by the sub scapularis muscle, the latissimus dorsi muscle and the teres major muscle you can see the lateral wall of the axilla is made of corocobrachialis muscle and biceps muscle and the three important components of the axilla as we mentioned earlier the axillary vein, the axillary artery and the brachial plexus thank you hope you found this useful good luck